This week we had a brand new wireless audio kit sent to us by Sennel. Uh, this is the AWS 2000. Uh, it's a very small, very compact transmitter receiver kit. Uh, look at some B-roll. Yep, that's B-roll. Uh, that B-roll <laughs> is actually showing how small this stuff really is. Uh, it's, the receiver itself is about maybe the size of the palm of my hand. Uh, and it's got two SMA connectors on it. Speaking of the SMA connectors, the whips that come with the receiver, not a big fan of. As soon as you want to move the elbow joint, it unscrews the SMA. If that little thing, if you don't care too much about the stock whip antennas, you're just going to put a distro system on the unit anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about is start, start talking about the transmitter though. This transmitter is smaller than a G3. Uh, not by a lot, but about about a half inch off the top. Uh, so that's going to make it easier to hide in basic Neopacks out there. The belt clip is a solid metal belt clip. It's kind of re kind of reminds me like what you're going to find on a uh, on a measuring tape. Uh, it's very strong, very stiff. I mean that's that's a very strong clip. Uh, the 3.5, it is locking, so we like that. What we don't like is actually how much tension is in the connector itself. You plug in the 3.5 millimeter lavalier and you feel like you've pushed it in far enough, but you haven't, you need to push it a second time and then it finally kind of pushes past the, I guess the lock that holds the tip connector in place on 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, it's really, really stiff. It doesn't feel like a Sennheiser, it doesn't feel like a Sony, it doesn't even feel like a Roadlink. Not sure how I feel about that. The other thing, uh, we are maxing currently on our transmitter. Uh, it's set to zero dB. Uh, this is the stock LOV that they sent with the uh, unit. You buy the LOV separate, you don't buy it with this, but they sent us a Sennel LOV uh, to kind of get an idea of. The LOV itself actually has crazy thin wire. Uh, it's probably about a one millimeter wire. It's not anything special. I don't think there's going to be a Kevlar or any kind of metal wire in there to kind of help uh, give it a little bit more tension like you see with uh, others. But uh, overall, it's not a bad little wire. It's going to be very easy to hide. I've got it currently running right down my shirt. You probably don't even notice it. I've hidden the lavalier up in the pattern of the shirt. We went to Sun Studios. We're in Memphis. Uh, and it's just hidden in there. It's, it's not actually that big. It's actually quite small. Uh, the whip itself on the transmitter, it's pretty springy. Uh, we've only had it for about a week though, so I can't say, oh, it's gonna stay springy. I don't know. Uh, these really haven't been on the market long enough to know what that antenna really is gonna do long term. Uh, we'll find out in the future though when people start you know, requesting fixes on these. And we don't even know what they're gonna look like on the secondhand market, how much wear and tear uh, they're really gonna put up. But that's a metal case, uh, so that's kind of a nice thing. The battery door, kind of plasticky, very cheap feeling. Uh, again, it makes a weird clicking noise when you have to open it all the way to put the AA batteries in. Not a big fan of that. Uh, it, it sounds really cheap. Uh, the transmitter, here's something very interesting though. The transmitter comes with a USB jack. Uh, this USB jack can actually charge your uh, rechargeable AA batteries. So kind of cool, you just put it on charge at the end of the night, but if you're gonna use this in a bag and say use the receivers for a bunch of camera hops, you can actually run that right off your BDS system. So that's kind of a real nice improvement that we've not seen from any transmitter currently on the market. Um, really excited to see that. It is not though a serial USB. So when it comes time to updating the firmware on these units, that's not gonna work. You're gonna to have to send these units in. I talked to Sennel about that. They said there's not gonna be firmware. And that's a shame because there's some stuff we wanna see fixed. Uh, if you wanna mess with the sensitivity of the lavalier, the two buttons on the side actually do that. You can't do it in the menu. Uh, we would like to actually see that in the menu. So that means now you have to run with this thing always in lock mode at all times, which means you, when you have to go mess with the settings, you now have to unlock it and then play around with it. It's just kind of a pain. I mean, it would have been nice had it been buried in a menu. Uh, the OLED screen on this is fantastic. Here's some B-roll of that. That is some pretty OLED B-roll for all you OLED fanboys out there. Um, 
overall, uh, I have no idea what this sounds like. Uh, the voiceover uh, this whole time uh, over that B-roll as well as this is actually being recorded from this microphone right into our C100. So you're hearing exactly what this sounds like the whole time. Uh, we'll kind of leave that up to you if you like the sound. Speaking of sound quality, you may be asking yourself, Andrew, this is not exactly where you test microphones. Yeah, I know, but we also never shoot in places where you test microphones. We shoot in real environments, just like we did with the Aperture DD uh, review that we shot actually back in the back halls of a uh, convention center. We're actually shooting this inside of a commercial kitchen in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, because you shoot in commercial kitchens. You shoot in kitchens all the time in film, and if a lavalier can't perform in a kitchen, well, then it just can't perform. It needs to be in the most rugged of environments, the worst environments, and still be able to hold up. Does this compare, though, to the G2, G3 series? It's a hard one. It really is a hard one. Uh, the ergonomics of this unit kick the G3's ass. I mean, outside of the sensitivity for the microphone, this thing is a dream to play with. Um, and I say play with because it doesn't feel frustrating. It really, the screen is really beautiful. You don't mind looking at it. Um, there is one issue though, the scan. We're not a big fan of the scan feature. Uh, you hit one button on the very top, it does a scan. It finds the frequency, really does it actually in 15 seconds. They claim 15 seconds, it really does it. It then picks the best frequency and you then have to sync it, IR sync, with your transmitter. That's awesome, except for the fact that if I change the squelch settings on my receiver, it does not actually affect the scan. So that kind of sucks. Uh, like the G3, G2, we know if you change the squelch, it actually affects how many channels that it actually shows us is really free to us. So not a big fan of that. Also. It scans and it only shows you the one frequency that it found instead of a bank of frequencies. So that's a little frustrating because if you have multiple units, I can't do easy coordination. I now have to get my Freak Finder app out. You're really gonna end up doing a lot of scanning with something like an RF Explorer or with uh, your sheets and your Freak Finder app uh, if you own several of these and you plan on using these for talent wire. But if you just plan on using these as camera hops, these could actually probably be a decent camera hop. Uh, I wish the transmitter would be SMA if you're gonna do them for camera hops. Uh, this may be decent enough for a boom hop. Again, I don't know what the audio sounds like. That's for you guys to determine. Overall, the features you're looking for in a wireless microphone are present in this guy. Uh, is this gonna replace your electrosonics? No. Could this replace your G3s? Maybe, honestly. Uh, if you're looking for talent wire and you're looking for brand new and you're starting out, this could actually be a really nice kit for you to start out in. We just don't know what the secondhand market is if you're gonna be able to recoup your money afterwards or if you're gonna end up buying the nicer electrosonics and then turning these all into like camera hops and boom op listening hops because it is possible uh, with the headphone output on the receiver. It's, it's, it's kind of a, maybe a little too early to say whether or not these are a purchase item uh, but they are definitely fun. It's, it's definitely gonna challenge, I think, some of the other makers of wireless audio out there to really start thinking uh, about this kind of ergonomics and uh, this size. This is really, really nice. This is, a, this is a dream to work with. One last thing, totally forgot to do. I can't believe I did this. All the other YouTubers uh, out there in the YouTube world, they say stuff like, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell to get the notifications and stuff like that. Uh, they may even say something like, hey, check out this link in the description and I get a small commission off of it, I think. I don't, I, I don't have any of that, but I do have a subscribe button. Did you, did you click it? Did you click it? Click it. Click the subscribe button.